Yes. <coughs> Thank you very much. First of all, many thanks for inviting me or us from Germany. Um, we have tried to answer the questions we received, and uh, it will be a shared presentation. Uh, the first part will be from me, the other, the second part from Manuel Schweiger from the Zoological Society. And uh, this <coughs> fact that we are sharing the presentation may also be recognized as an indicator for a very good and fruitful cooperation between GOs and NGOs in Germany. And uh, I hope that at the very end you will have a good imagine about this. What about my agenda? Um, I would like to discuss uh, the following points with you. The starting point of my presentation is our national strategy on biodiversity and especially the wilderness targets in this strategy. But I don't want to talk about the strategy only. I have a lot of challenges and some ideas for implementation. Or let me say an overview of about we are, what we are doing already for implementation wilderness in Germany. And finally, uh, yeah, communication and public relations work. You can see that will be the focus of the second part of the presentation. I will give you a brief overview on our special tasks of our agency and uh, small outlook. You see a lot of points, but I think you are now powerful after this good cakes and coffee and uh, you will survive this presentation. Yes, first of all, the German National Strategy on Biodiversity is already nearly 10 years old. It will have its 10th anniversary this year. And it is a strategy of the government, agreed by all ministries, and you can calculate 10 years means at least three, di three different governments uh, who have uh, kept this strategy in the mind and it is, uh, has gone from one government to the other. So this strategy is a very strong uh, document uh, in the German nature conservation or biodiversity policy. It is, it's a German strategy and therefore uh, you can imagine <coughs> that every detail is discussed, therefore we have 28 concrete visions. Remember the Czech Republic, we have four main tasks and we have 330 targets. They are often very concrete, they have target years, but you can also imagine that out of these different targets, only a few targets uh, uh, were able to escape into the wild or into the public and wilderness is one of these targets that has had the chance to escape from the strategy into the everyday discussion. Yes, and then there are also a lot of fields of actions I don't want to go into detail. And also there is a report every once every four years based on 19 indicators. So there is also a control mechanism that shows how is the progress in implementation. The wilderness target, uh, our vision for the future, German again boosts fascinating areas of wilderness. For example, in national parks which are left to develop naturally and undisturbed. You see, it is uh, orientated also to the future. It is not only addressing what is already existing on wilderness areas. And it comes clearer, much clearer if you look at the games. By the year 2020, which is really close to now, Mother Nature is again able to develop at least uh, throughout at least 2% of Germany's national territory. So that's the, the target, 2%, and uh, we have already the idea of national parks, and now we have a list where we should look for wilderness areas, and that is uh, also post-mining landscapes, military exercise <coughs> zones, but also water courses, um, uh, coastlines, peatlands, high altitude mountains. So it addresses forests, but a number of other eco 
ecosystems and also areas which have been disturbed heavily by human impacts. And uh, the second point is also very important, a large portion of the wilderness areas are large areas. And then we have some ideas on uh, <coughs> connectivity, I don't want to go into details. Additionally, to this one vision, wilderness is one vision from 28 in the strategy, there are further uh, uh, targets in the uh, National Biodiversity Strategy concerning wilderness. There is, for example, by 2020, 5% of the forests should be uh, natural forests, forests without human impact, and 10% of the public owned uh, forest land uh, should be under natural development. And then there are also the special wilderness targets and for coasts, seas, water coasts, peatland, and mountain areas. What are the challenges? You know, um, uh, I think you have made these experiences in all of your countries when you come around the corner with the idea of wilderness there. You have a lot of people who are against. First on the front are the landowners and the foresters. <laughs> Uh, the foresters, even if they are state employed and uh, responsible for state owned lands, are uh, often very strong of uh, fighting against wilderness. And we have a well developed forest industry in terms of uh, sawing mills, etc., who also think all the public forests are very private owned forests and they are strong fighting against it. The federal system in Germany is also a big challenge. You know we have 16 federal states. The federal states are responsible for the implementation of nature conservation. And they are, have different governments, and so they have different ideas of implementing wilderness or not. So, um, <clears throat> and we have uh, another challenge is that there is a responsibility for forests in most of the federal states, not with the ministries of environment, but often with the ministries of agriculture and forestry. So you have also different uh, ministries uh, to talk about, and there are also some responsibilities in the ministry of uh, uh, transport and traffic infrastructure in terms of if you have um, the idea of connecting wilderness areas and you are in conflict with uh, infrastructure and whatever. Financial aspects, I don't think I have to go into detail. It's all the time money, uh, the, the most, one of the most important challenges, and communication. We have, uh, that is a big challenge for us to bring this idea these ideas, our ideas, into the uh, society, into the different actors, stakeholders, and into the general public. How to reach the wilderness aims? We try to, uh, we have some ideas and strategies how to reach this 2%. I will give you an, uh, one of my further slides. You will, have, you will also have an overview of the status quo. Yes, first of all, what is very important is policy work. Without policy, a willingness uh, into the, uh, from the politicians, you will not be successful. There is a lot of what has been done on the politic level. It's not only the German government who has given, have drawn a strategy, but it's also true for a lot of the federal states, Bundesländer. And a lot of administrative work on wilderness definition, what does wilderness mean, to identify criteria, etc. I will go to, into detail soon on. We had to do a lot of scientific work because nobody knows 2007 how big is the potential in Germany, how much wilderness is possible in Germany. Nobody knows, and therefore a lot of questions had to be answered and have still to be answered. 
Public relations work is also one of our main focuses, and I also introduced it when I started, is the cooperation between NGOs and administrations on different levels, not to get shared, divided into different positions. It's very important from our point of view. Yes, then we have a lot of opportunities for project funding on the federal state level and a uh, strongly increasing budget. After 2007, our, we received an additional budget for implementation of the national, national strategy of, of around 15 million euros per year. This will increase up to 30 million euros per year. And we will have some additional funding programs with special focus, for example, on the river line system. So money for concrete implementation project is not the problem on, at the moment. And the last point I will go into detail, the German federal state identified a huge amount of areas, state-owned, which uh, are suitable for, suitable for nature conservation purposes and which are given for nature conservation activities. Just to, remind, to remember your situation in Germany, 16 federal states, you can see a very complicated political structure. In the strategy, you had uh, some short sentences about wilderness, and if you ask the people, the scientists, the colleagues about wilderness, um, I uh, about wilderness, you will receive different answers. We had uh, definitions from IUCN, we have already heard them. Then we had an IUCN definition adapted to the European situation. You have uh, different wilderness initiatives, and we discussed it uh, uh, on different workshops, uh, especially on our island of film, and at the very end, we adapted the following definition for wilderness, wilderness areas in the sense of the German National Biodiversity Strategy as a sufficiently large, non-fragmented areas free of intrusive or extractive human activity they serve to permanently provide for the ecological functioning of natural processes without human interference. A very general definition already published in 2013, but that's the baseline for our work. Keep in, the mind, in your mind that it is especially addressing the wilderness in the sense of our strategy. There may be some other wilderness, wilderness definitions in other terms. Yeah, relatively general definition. So the next step we thought to be necessary is to identify some quality criteria which are to be able or with which we are able to describe what this definition means. And that was a very, very difficult process. Uh, we had to take into account the international processes and definitions, especially the IUCN category 1B, but there's also the Wild Europe Initiative. We had uh, to take into account the general possibilities in Germany and our limitations we have. Um, the current process in Germany has been finished last week. We started with a report uh, which has been uh, written by Europark Federation Germany, who are very experienced in defining quality criteria for national parks. Uh, we had uh, several workshops on the island of Film in 2014 and 15. Out of these uh, things, we developed a set of criteria in, discussion, in the discussion with our ministry based on the uh, different reports. And then uh, the last step was to discuss uh, the criteria with the other German administrations. And the last 
uh, last meeting was last week. It's already on the uh, slide. In February 2017, we made some final minor changes, and now in the German version of these uh, quality criteria are available, and we hope to translate them into English very soon. Uh, <coughs> is the preparation of the pub. What is uh, we have 50 criteria. I have to explain that Europark Germany developed two sets of criteria. The first set of criteria with which you can define what is a wilderness area. If you're a wilderness area, when you try to identify that. And the second set of criteria descri des are describing the quality of existing wilderness areas. The second set we put aside and didn't discuss further on at the moment. So only the first part is finished now. What are some main uh, criteria? First of all, uh, we think the wilderness area should be uh, long term, uh, ideally in the yeah, forever. And therefore we think uh, uh, wilderness areas should have a legal protection. So that is one of the criteria. Uh, we recommend public ownership. We had a very, very long discussion on the site. And we are now, that was, I have to say, that was a starting point uh, five or six years ago, and we kept this uh, figures. We say, uh, in terms of forested areas, the wilderness area should be at least of top, uh, the size of 1,000 hectares. For fans, coasts, mountains, we accept 500 hectares, depending on the situation. So that is uh, the with these figures we describe what is meant with large areas in the strategy. Then we have some ideas on disturbances, compactness, management, wildlife management. What about settlements, infrastructure fragmentation? I cannot <coughs> present all these. Uh, details, but not naturalness. So we are thinking about old wilderness, wilderness, as we have, for example, in some of the national parks. But we address especially wilderness, <coughs> as explained in the first presentation today. So you you have seen uh, which areas we address military training grounds, former mining areas, but also in terms of the forest, we accept uh, forests which have a low level of naturalness at the moment. We want to protect the process. So we have future wilderness and future protection, which is also true for most of, or even all of our national parks. They are all developing national So legal protection, um, there is no category of protected areas after the German law, law which is directly matching the ISCN category 1B. Most of our national parks uh, are fulfilling the category, others are in the category 2 of the uh, ISCN categories, and we have a few uh, nature reserves which are uh, matching this category, but there is no wilderness category after German law. And the, we don't plan to do this, to add the category wilderness areas. What we are able to do is to protect wilderness areas by the existing categories after the Nature Conservation Act. It's national park, then we have national nature monument. There is a, uh, no example by now. It's not true. We have one now. Biosphere reserve the core zones if they are large enough and nature reserves. So we have four tools, four legal tools for protecting wilderness areas after the nature conservation law. But there are other legal instruments, for example, given by the forest law, which could also be used for legal protection. In general, you could also use private contracts, but after the German law, every private contract can be um, yeah, can be stopped after 30 years, or so therefore we think that it's not 
a good idea to try to protect wilderness areas by private contracts. Uh, as I pointed out, we did a lot of scientific projects. I don't want to go into detail. The most uh, important is the first one, where we try to identify the potential areas in Germany which are, which are uh, fulfill, could fill, fulfill the 2% uh, target. Um, and uh, we had some special research on former military training grounds. Uh, we are in, at the moment have a scientific study that tries to identify a typical wilderness species. Uh, we are looking about which role have, do natural, natural disturbances play in wilderness areas. And uh, <clears throat> we are uh, looking at the other categories still existing, whether they could be uh, offered uh, a contribution to the wilderness target, for example, biosphere reserves and also nature parks. So we especially address these existing protective areas and we also had a study that uh, analyzed uh, <coughs> which requirements do we have in terms of protection and administration of wilderness areas. So a uh, couple of uh, studies to uh, support the implementation. We, there is also a study which is done by the uh, German uh, Environmental Foundation, which owns uh, 70,000 hectare of former of land, which has former been owned by the German federal government for developing of wilderness areas. Yes, now let me uh, answer the question, is there enough space for wilderness in Germany? That is a question we had to deal with. And our study uh, says, yes, it is. Here you can see a map of uh, search areas for wilderness in Germany. You can here again see these different uh, ecosystem types like floodplains, coastal areas, and so on. And we define the core areas of our national parks are within this uh, definition. So that is the map, the very secret map, uh, because you can imagine that uh, many people are interested to look whether their forest belongs to these areas. So what is the result in figures? Where is, what is the situation now in Germany? Uh, the search areas identified by these scientific projects were around 1.256 million hectares. That corresponds to 3.5% of the German territories. So if you compare it with the 2% target, you can say the 2% target is not a uh, target uh, for crazy people, it's realistic. In the beginning of the discussion of the national strategy, we discussed 5%. That would be been a problem. But 3.5% is what we could identify as potential uh, area. The NBS target is 750,000 hectares. So there is a huge difference. Uh, the status quo is a about 210 to 225,000 hectares. So we now have 0.6% of the German territory matches the, uh, these uh, targets. So there's a lot of work uh, to do for us still remaining. Yes, we have 60 national parks. Uh, we have some already some large nature reserves which are. Uh, exceeding the thousand hectare. Our very most famous example, the former military training ground, is the Königsbrucker Heide, with more than 4,000 hectare. So it's one of the biggest nature reserves we have in Germany. We are looking at the former military training grounds, and uh, we are uh, also uh, uh, discussing state owned forests, not only on the German federal level, but also on the level of the uh, German Bundesländer. But there is not a big 
discussion at the moment by uh, forest owned by community or by the two churches in Germany, that will be a, a challenge for the near future. And I already mentioned it a little bit, uh, we have um, a process since a couple of years under the headline National Natural Heritage where the German federal state, Germany, has identified areas which are suitable for nature conservation tasks and which have taken them out of the human use and uh, yes, to develop it for nature conservation and um, some figures. Uh, it started 2005 with the first 80 to 120,000 hectares and we had two steps in 2009, 25,000 and again in 2013, 30,000 hectares that uh, is in total 156,000 hectares. Uh, these last project process, the last 30,000 uh, is just, uh, the implementation is just uh, in process and will end by, will be ended by end of the year and you can see the map, how they are distributed in Germany and you can clearly see there is a focus in Eastern Germany where we had, for example, the largest military training grounds in the past. And uh, the main target or the central target of this natural heritage is to develop natural unused forests. That's the overall target. And then you may imagine there are a lot of uh, uh, habitats of the uh, habitat directive. So there are also areas of open land and wet habitats which have to be managed. That is the second target of the national heritage, but the most areas are forests. So, and who received all these areas? The German Environmental Foundation received 45,000, 45%. Uh, we, our agency, in cooperation with the German state forest, will manage 20% in the future, the federal states, Bundesländer also 20%, and 50% is going to go to NGOs and private foundations. So they have the ownership now and have to manage it in the sense of the targets. And for our agency is completely new. We are now responsible for uh, 30,000 hectares of national natural heritage. That is uh, the same area that three average national parks in Germany had. Yes, and uh, as I pointed out at the very beginning, policy, poli policy work, <laughs> policy willingness is very important, and to, uh, there is uh, a continuing process in Germany. Uh, the last signal has been given at the end of 2015 by a campaign, Nature Conservation 2020, by our ministry. And uh, <coughs> also in this policy action plan, one of out of ten fields of actions is wilderness development. So it's still in the mind of the German at least of the German Ministry of Environment. They had two main targets. The first is to invade, invite the state, the federal ministries of the federal states for a uh, joint initiative for more wilderness in Germany and also a strong initiative for communication about wilderness. So this is one still a political target and uh, this has been published in 2015. Yes, as I said, we had a lot of money. One of the most important project funding is the National Program on Biological, uh, bio, uh, on biological Biodiversity, uh, is a, on Biological Diversity, it's a mistake. That has been established in 2011, has a long-term perspective, and you can see the budget line, 15, 18, 
and uh, we will have uh, those figures are not correct anymore. We will have 30 million in 2010. So, and uh, we have four main focuses, species for which Germany has a special responsibility, uh, protecting ecosystem services, hotspots of biological diversity in Germany, and additional measures with importance for the implementation of the strategy, which means we can do everything with the money. So, uh, this is uh, one of my, our most important budget lines to support the wilderness and big I will give you one example of uh, what is going on in the federal states. I here have the example of North Rhine Westphalia, North Rhine is fine. Uh, they may uh, establish a new uh, cons Nature Conservation Act for North Rhine Westphalia in November 2016, very new. There is a new regulation. Uh, Article 40, Wilderness Developing Areas, based on the 5% target of the national strategy on natural forest implementation. And, but what is very important, with the, with the day this law uh, get, went into force, into work, 112 sites have been established as wilderness areas by law. They are, as you can see, many are smaller, but uh, the biggest one is uh, 3,975 hectares. They are protected as nature reserves per law. A very important stop, step in the German federal stage, which is heavily populated by humans, which is, is very famous for industry, but has not been very famous for wilderness areas in the past. But you can see uh, that is uh, a uh, result of the discussion with us, uh, which is going on since 10 years in Germany. OK, then we have a lot of communication. I will shorten it, because Manuel will talk about it. Uh, we are just running a project on wild wilderness communication, and uh, we will have uh, the opportunity to hear a lot about, uh, about in the next presentation. So I will just uh, summarize what is our role in the process. Uh, the German Federal Agency is uh, had the main. Our main task is to uh, is scientific guidance for political decision-making processes. So you can be sure that a lot of the, what is you can read in the national strategy has been written in our offices, especially on the German ministry, but also in the federal states. We are giving advice. We do a lot of knowledge transfer and financial support, as I pointed out, not only project funding, but also scientific research. We do a lot of work uh, to enhance cooperation on the national and international level in terms of wilderness debate. And uh, we also do a lot of public relation work in terms of press, public relation, but also scientific studies uh, on what people are thinking about wilderness. Too much to tell. So I am at the end. I don't know how much time I spent um, to summarize. Wilderness is a, in the meantime, broadly accepted nature conservation strategy. Here you can see the results of this study. People were asked, have been asked, what do you think? Should there be more wilderness or fewer wilderness in Germany, or is it okay as it is? And you can see 42% uh, uh, interested in having more wilderness, 42 persons are happy with the situation, and only 3% said the earth already too much. So it is a broad acceptance that we, a lot of other questions asked and not able to go into details. We are think, I think we are in a good way for implementation of the wilderness objectives. Um, we have a big contribution by the federal states, the Bundesländer. <coughs> they are supporting the idea by their own politics, by own projects. But 
as I pointed out, there is still a relevant gap between the 2% target and the actual situation, so we need additional areas. We had to <coughs> identify especially areas from other partners, and uh, we have uh, to use the funding opportunities much more as we have done up to now for the complete establishment of wilderness areas. There is still a serious critical discussion, especially in terms of the use of forest and wood. And, uh, <clears throat> yes, and we are also in discussion with other further aspects, for example, the relationship between the two of 2000 and wilderness. It popped up in the, this afternoon for a short moment. And uh, yes, quality criteria is the last step. And I end up with the picture of the Königsbrucker Heide, which is uh, four, more than 4,000 hectare of wilderness in a big nature reserve, former military training ground in this new wilderness. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for a very systematic presentation. We have some immediate yeah, questions now. Um, thank you very much for a very detailed explanation about the situation in Germany. Um, so you are focused when you are talking about wilderness mainly to something which is IOCN category 1B. Because I think uh, it is quite a crucial thing again what is <laughs> the wilderness criteria and I think that we are still having different a wildness criteria. I appreciate your approach, it's fine. Uh, but at the same time, if we understand wildness also as a non intervention or hands off what we heard before, then it's maybe not only category 1B. It is a question, comment, whatever. <laughs> Yes, it's difficult. 1B is our starting point in thinking about the definition. And uh, we try to adapt it to the, to the German situation. Therefore, uh, the aspect of new wilderness is, uh, is one of the main focus. Not only having, uh, because there is no original or uh, uh, wilderness in Germany with the exception of some mountain. Mm -hmm. So the process is very important. But in general, 1B is, uh, is an is a important guideline for us. Okay, yes. Thanks. So, yeah, men on the last and then. Just a short question, why are you so reluctant to establish wilderness as a, as a legal category when it plays such an important role in the future in the German conservation landscape? Why do we not establish wilderness as a really legal category? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really a good question. Um, it is a question on politics. We, had, um, we made a lot of experiences uh, in the discussion uh, on the categories, and I, you can be sure that all, even our ministry is not able to, uh, every time, be able to make uh, the, to see the difference between a national park or a nature park. Uh, we don't want to have a discussion on uh, legal category additional. We had one. Uh, when uh, these uh, natural, na natural, natural monument was implemented in 2002. Nobody can un understand what that means. We don't want to have more categories, we want to have more wilderness areas. Uh, one question. Uh, we are uh, discussing that uh, the building is a nature. That natural processes uh, issue with the Czech Republic quite intensively and all of the national parks are at borders. So we are comparing uh, the situation also to our partners. And we are from the Bavarian side and I would like to ask you if there, there is, uh, uh, from your perspective, uh, differences within the uh, different German federal states uh, speaking about the 
uh, natural uh, process protection because so far I know uh, the situation about, for example, this uh, invasive species and uh, uh, alien species uh, in Bavaria is, is different to the situation in Saxonia because our partners in the Bavarian Forest National Parks does have uh, the possibility of intervenes uh, against the invasive species even in the nature, natural zone if they uh, 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 see uh, and the, the monitoring and science uh, observe that this invasive species behave like invasively. Uh, so I, I see there's a big difference to the, the situation in Saxonia. So uh, what is your experience on the federal yeah. level? That's true. Uh, I, I pointed out 16 uh, different federal states and um, yeah, in the worst case, 60 different approaches. That is true. And we try to, uh, to have some general um, agreements as we define the quality criteria for national parks, and we have this evaluations uh, process, as you know. But uh, indeed, uh, there are differences between the parks and the federal states, and uh, they mainly address uh, alien species and hunting. Mm -hmm. That we have the biggest, as from my point of view, uh, the biggest difference. In others, we have the same type, 75% core area, even if it is not necessary after our law. So only 50% would be enough, but there is a general agreement to uh, have this target, but there is no general agreement in terms of alien species and, and uh, hunting. The last question is the other then we will continue. You mentioned the criterion of size of wilderness area. Uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, the size of the forest area should be more than uh, 1,000 hectares. Does it mean that the smaller areas, for example, some lizards, generally will not count to the 2% goal? Or? Yes, that can happen. Therefore, we are pointing out that we have a set of wilderness targets. One is a 2% of large wilderness area, but we have a 5% target on forests, and they start with 0.3 hectares. <coughs> so there's a very low limit. And in between, we have the other ecosystems like river and systems. But there is still the process here. You know, we have to discuss the 16 federal states. Uh, if you have a good um, good arguments, you can also have smaller areas. We have not made a decision yet how to address this criteria because they are pretty new. Whether there should be uh, a labeling or something is not we haven't discussed yet. Our first target was at least for us and for our colleagues all over the country to have a clear idea of what we mean when we say large wilderness area. That was the first step. So thank you very much.